Hi, this is Kay of Clever Someday, and today I want to show you an easy-ish method of preparing photos for engraving with a Cricut Maker. This one can be done almost entirely in design space, except for converting the photo to SVG, which is best done in Emma Engine iOS app, Adobe Capture iOS or Android app, CuteCutter.com, or whatever your favorite method is. I'm not going to cover how to do that here, but I do have other resources I'll reference in the video description. So to follow along with me, you will need a photo that is already converted to SVG, as if you were going to cut it from vinyl, and already uploaded in Design Space. The photo I started with is on the left, and the SVG version done in Emma Engine is on the right. I've uploaded it to Design Space, so it's ready to go. The trick to turning an outline into solids for engraving is to fill the outline with many lines. There are a number of methods to do this, but we're going to use a very simple one I first posted about in 2009, which is to start with a pattern of lines and slice our image with it. I'm sharing my DS file with the line pattern already prepared. You can find it at the link in the video description and need to open it in Design Space like I have done here. The black rectangle you see on the left is already made up of many vertical lines so small and close together that you can't see them. For this reason, you're going to just have to trust me as we go through the steps. Don't change the size of the line pattern block because that will change the line spacing in the final engraving. The next thing I'm going to do is create a shape to represent the total size I want engraved. In my case, a 3 by 3 inch square. I choose a square from the shapes palette and resize it to 3 inches. You have up to 5 by 7 to work with, but you're probably going to want to stay smaller than that because it takes a long time to engrave with a Cricut. I'm going to set the angle to 30 degrees because that works well for most images. It can be any angle you like, except I don't recommend 90 degrees. Also, your engraving size may limit the angle you can use, but I have plenty of room here. Make sure the smaller shape is completely inside the larger one. Select both and click Slice. Delete the larger shape and one of the two smaller ones. If I enlarge this temporarily, you'll see it is made up of many diagonal lines. Next, I insert my SVG. I want to resize it just a little larger than my shape, so I'll use a height of 3.05. Because my SVG came from Emma Engine, it has an extra solid layer, which I simply delete. So now it's just one layer. I select the photo SVG and the line pattern shape and center them and group them. We need to slice again to get the line pattern into our image, but before we do that, there's a trick to get better results, and that is to work large. To keep the math simple, we're going to use a factor of 10. So I'm going to enlarge this from 3.05 to 30.5, or 3.05 times 10. Then I'm going to slice. This is going to take a little bit, so be patient. When it's done, look over at the Layers panel and pick the one that looks like a negative of the others and delete the rest. If you've followed me for long, you've heard me talk about the face inversion effect. Engraving on acrylic or metal inverts the image, so we are pre-inverting our file to compensate for that. Again, trust me, this will make a huge difference in your end result. You can see that our image is filled with lots of stripes, which is what we want. Now we need to go back to the smaller size. So to do that, we divide the height by 10 from 30 to 3. This preserves the line spacing across the whole process, so it's important. The next step applies only to clear acrylic. Because we engrave on the back but view from the front, we want to mirror. So from the Flip button, choose Flip Horizontal. Our next step is to choose Engrave from the Line Type pull-down. Now you're ready to engrave using the placement method and material settings and other steps you like for engraving the material you have chosen. I'm not going to cover these details here, but I have a number of other related resources I will link for you. I know it doesn't look right on the screen, but the proof is in the engraving. I hope you enjoyed learning about the simplified method of engraving photos. I've included links to various supporting tutorials in the video description, so be sure to check those out. 
And also be sure to join my Cricut Engraving with Clever Someday Facebook group, where you can see lots of examples and get help. If you're ready to up your photo engraving game with a more sophisticated method that allows shading, I have an ebook on how to do that with Silhouette Studio Business Edition and the Cricut Maker, which I'll also link below. As always, I really appreciate you watching, liking, sharing, and commenting, and I'd love to see what you create with this method.